For the first time since the season opener, the Dallas Cowboys fall in regular season action as the Philadelphia Eagles come out on top in this one by 9, 26 to 17. The final score from Lincoln Financial Field in Philly as we break things down for you on the first word presented by Dr. Pepper alongside Isaiah Stanback, Nate Newton, Haley Sutton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Glad you're with us here from the star in Frisco. And let's start things off by looking at what happened with Cooper Rush. I mean, the stat line really speaks for itself. 18 of 38 most pass attempts in a game this season for Cooper Rush, just 181 yards, a touchdown and three interceptions. It wasn't his best game, but you can really say that from the offense as a whole. They needed to find their rhythm late, but by that point it was too late. Yeah, you're absolutely correct, Kyle. I think the one thing that people are forgetting as much success of the Dallas Cowboys have had this year with Cooper Rush. They've utilized him as a game manager. You haven't asked him to be a game winner. And the moment that you put him in a position where he's behind the change, you're now behind on the scoreboard. Now you're asking him to throw the ball 30 plus times a game. That's not who Cooper Rush is. And I think they asked a little bit too much of him today. And in the first half, they just took away the run. So we had nothing to go on. And we and I said earlier, we needed at least four passes of 15 yards or more to back those guys up. But James Bradbury and uh, uh, Slay, Slay had a, a super day today. Yeah, I agree exactly with what Isaiah said. We asked Cooper, I think, to do maybe a little bit too much. I don't think that he necessarily played worse other than the interceptions, but I think that Cooper has shown who he was the entire time he's been starting, and today, unfortunately, he just faced a defense that had his number. And it was talked about throughout the week that Cooper Rush hasn't shown, nor has he needed to show, that he can come back from behind. And the Cowboys gave up 20 points unanswered in that second quarter. And Philadelphia has dominated teams to a historic fashion in the second quarter all season long. They continued that into week six. But that was really the, the real thorn in the side of the Cowboys was the fact that they had to play from behind. They had to go away from the run. They got back to it in the third quarter, and it actually worked out to help them get back within a score. But then Philly answered the way that Philly does. Yeah, Philly, Philadelphia just controlled this game. When you talked about them getting up to a, you know, their 20 0 lead early on, you know, that automatically put the, you know, Kellen Moore, Dallas Cowboys, Cooper Rush, whoever you want to say, but their backs against the wall. Now they put, made them one sided. The moment the Dallas Cowboys become one sided, I don't care who your quarterback is, you're in a bad position. This is a run first offense. I don't care who's calling the plays. They need to be able to lead with Zeke. Zeke did a great job tonight rushing the ball. He was always falling forward. Unfortunately, by the time they got to him, like you mentioned, they're already behind. And you couldn't stop the rushing attack for the Philadelphia Eagles. They did what they've been doing all year long. They continue that against the Cowboys tonight. With 33 uh, minutes time of possession, I mean, 6 of 14 on the, on the third downs. And, you know, only two penalties for 10 yards. They, they did a great job. They played with discipline. They played with our poise. And they just took over the game as it went on. Yeah, and I think it's hard to find success, right, when your wide receivers aren't putting up yards, aren't making the catches that you're used to. CeeDee Lamb with just 68 yards. And when he's your wide receiver run, wide receiver one, and only getting those 68 yards, your other guy, 40, 22, you know, you're not going to find success down the field. It doesn't help Cooper out. It definitely doesn't help the offense. Isaiah, what did you see with the defense specifically? Because they did give up multiple touchdowns for the first time in a game this season. But overall, it really felt like they still played good football. They just were held off balance more so than you're used to seeing. Their heads were on a swivel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you were to tune into the pregame show. We talked about how these guys are going to have their eyes all over the place. Philadelphia does a great job of running that RPO, that run pass option, and it gives them too many options. You have, you know, Watkins, you had, you know, you had uh, AJ Brown, you have these guys all over the place. Miles Sanders, you got to worry about, you know, the, the quarterback. So, it kept those guys off guard. They weren't allowed to. They weren't allowed to do what they've done all year long, which is pin their ears back and simply come downhill. Yeah. They were coming downhill and getting the ball out to the edges. You know, you look at the game and you see where the quarterback is reading. And when they when they gave us a zero look, they took advantage of it. They threw over it. They threw in the middle. And when they backed those safeties off, the quarterback took off and ran. Or either they gave it to uh, Sanders and he took off and ran. So they read us perfectly and uh, they played us hard. Yeah, I just think that for the past couple of weeks, we've been expecting the defense to make big plays. We've been expecting the defense uh, to keep the Cowboys in games. And unfortunately, when you meet a team like the Eagles, who has the proven record as they have right now, now your offense has to step up. So I don't think, again, similar to the offense in Cooper Rush, I don't think anything necessarily changed, but it needed to change on the offensive side of the ball to help the defense be a little bit more successful. So kudos to them. We've been saying it all year. There's not a whole lot more they can do. Uh, the offense just needs to catch up. Yeah, just the six points allowed in the second half by the Cowboys defense. Did you like the adjustments that Dan Quid made to, to at least try and combat that RPO and what worked for Philadelphia so early on in that game? 
I feel as if I want to give Dan Quinn the credit for that, and I love me some Dan Quinn. Everybody knows. <laughs> but I really think this was more Philadelphia getting outside of what they had been doing that gave them the success early on. So I think once they figure that out and they calm down and they kind of slow down the, the attack of Dallas in that second, that early in that third quarter, they, you saw exactly what Philadelphia did. They said, okay, let's get the ball back. Let's go back into pistol formation, mm -hmm. give the ball back to Miles Sanders, come downhill, and then let's get back out on these edges. And that's when you saw the resurgence of their offense. That's what I agree with. I, I, I think once they came out of the second half and Dallas put a little pressure on them, they just went back to running yep. the ball. They wanted a little bit more. They played a little bit tougher. They played a little bit smarter. And uh, that, hey, they just ran us out of the stadium. Yeah, and it doesn't help when Micah Parsons isn't maybe playing at 100%. I think yeah. that really, really killed some of that defensive momentum that the Cowboys have had all season long. Not having him 100%, you can tell it really makes a big difference. Yeah, really, the only time he looked like he was 100% was after the <laughs> unsportsmanlike conduct that was called upon him. And then he got mad and he kind of came after it and, and forced the pressure. So things weren't great today in Philadelphia. That's no surprise. Cowboys do fall 26 to 17, but Dak Prescott could come back as soon as next week. That's not official. That's just a thought process with this injury moving forward. And right along that timeline, we were told initially when he left the game against Tampa Bay in week one, how much of a factor is that going to be to try and to get this team back on track? I think it's going to be huge from the perspective that Dak allows for you to open up your entire offense. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, Cooper Rush has been running this offense. Yeah, he has been, but the difference is the confidence when these guys step in the huddle. The difference is when you can go out there and spread things out because you know that he understands all the protections and he can get, get the ball to people on hot routes, things of that nature. And then guess what else? You can push the ball downfield. You haven't seen the ball pushed downfield since Cooper Rush has taken over at the QB position. You know, I just – it's a bad day uh, as pl as players and sports figure here and <laughs> baseball players. You have bad days. Yep. And this is just a bad day. You ran into a team that was well prepared at home doing what they need to do in a rough environment. It was just a bad day. And you know, the, the slipper fell off, man, mm. and it got Cooper. It stinks too for Cooper from his perspective that he's had, you know, such a good run. You know, when Dak went down, everybody said, this is over. The Cowboys are done. And now all of a sudden, now they're sitting at four and two. And so it's really unfortunate that everything he's done up to this point is going to be negated because he had a, a bad game, as yeah. Nate mentioned. Uh, but I mean, you got to be excited for Dak coming back next week. Your backup did the job. They've been talking about it ever since he went out. You know, uh, I, I'm just here until Dak comes back. And when Dak comes back, we welcome him with open arms. So it's good that the team is kind of ready to welcome him back. But you got to give Cooper his flowers. Yeah, that's a fantastic point because if right at the beginning of this, the thought process was best case scenario, three and three. You're at 500, you get Dak Prescott back, and you can make a push for the division. You're not three and three, you're four and two. It, it was even above expectations, but it is unfortunate that this will be the lasting image if indeed Dak Prescott comes back next week of the Cooper Rush return era, backup era, I guess you could say, <laughs> for Cowboys Nation. But Cowboys Nation isn't very happy at the moment. The Cowboys do fall 26 to 17. We leave you with some of the final stats from this matchup. Again, Third downs, one of the worst teams in the NFL in those late down scenarios that continued today. They were able to pick up the yardage late, but in the end, it was too much to overcome a 20 point deficit in the first half and the Cowboys fall on the road at Lincoln Financial Field. Be sure to tune in. We've got more post game reaction coming on Cowboys game night coming up in just a little bit, but that does it on the first word presented by Dr. Pepper.